Hey everyone, no respawns. So this is a guide on how to defeat the tutorial boss in Elden Ring uh, with any class. So I've seen quite a few people make videos on this, but usually it's very class specific, or it's uh, like something really complex, like, oh, just parry every one of his attacks, which to be frank, if you're able to parry this guy's attacks, you probably were able to defeat him anyway, and you aren't looking for a video like this. Uh, so this is for any class whatsoever, um, mainly because it requires you just taking advantage of three specific attacks. So I've played the Vagabond in this instance. You will notice at the start of the video I took most of my gear off. Uh, basically I just got it down so I'm on the lowest weight and now you see I'm just running in uh, two-handing. The reason being is I can get some damage straight off. So I'm going to heavy attack him and I'm going to light attack. Slash slash, a bit of an awkward light attack there, and I'm going to switch back to my shield. So, I am using the Vagabond in this one, which means, yes, I do have a 100% shield, which does make my life, I can be a little bit less careful, um, and I do, as you'll see, get, there we go, you see, I actually get whacked by one of his attacks right there. Um, I am going to speed the video up in a bit, but I'm going to point out the attacks that you take advantage of. So that one I actually whacked was one of the ones you should, um, but I will show you exactly how to do it. So I jump, roll into it, and stab him in the face. That's one you're probably going to get quite a lot. Then there's two others, which is this one, which is my favourite attack. Um, this is the best one because he always does that attack afterwards. When he does that attack, you want to just roll and then immediately charge um, a heavy attack. You can charge it or you can just press it. To be honest, I didn't want to risk charging it, but I thinking about it, I could probably charge it for some extra damage. Now, what he's doing right now with that double stab there, you can also take advantage of that. Um, and it's a very reliable combo to get into. Uh, the reason why I don't recommend it is there's a random set of flourishes they will do after that attack. And one of them is horrifically hard to dodge to the point if you're slightly off, um, you're absolutely screwed. The others aren't. If it wasn't for that one little flourish, I'm not even going to attempt it in this video because it just... If I'm slightly off, you die, and that's when I was practicing this. I played this as the astrologer, so I initially didn't have 100% um, shield. Um, is it, it, it was horrible. <laughs> I eventually decided to not, and then I realized it's really wrong. So this is the other one. Um, I do actually get hit on this in a minute. Oh, it's not this time. Okay, so base, it's those three attacks. That one, as you can see, I can actually two-hand, and I can also um, charge the attack up. Uh, so I actually get hit twice in this video, I think. Uh, both instances are me making mistakes, but I left them in because, to be honest, it's... you're going to make mistakes. This is a, this is a Souls game, uh, but I want to demonstrate that you don't need to panic too much. You do have a little bit of breathing room um, to actually take a couple of hits. So, what a couple of things to kind of bear in mind here. So, that attack right there is often the one you're going to miss quite a lot. Is this the one I get hit? No, okay, fair enough. Uh, that one, the one he jumps in, you do miss quite a lot. Sometimes he might be a little bit far away when he jumps in, so you'll miss the stab. Always, always, always immediately roll back. That's why I've got this as most of my gear taken off, because that extra distance I can roll just makes the whole fight a lot easier. Now, you may notice that this is taking a while. This one took me around 15 minutes to do. Uh, generally speaking, yeah, 15 to 20 minutes is kind of the time scale here, which is why... For some people, it's going to seem quite an ordeal. I love that attack so much. That is the safest attack, because he'll always, pretty much always, I believe, do that little flourish at the back, and it just never hits you. Um, it's really nice. He actually did it quite a lot during the end. Now, obviously, I'm playing the Vagabond. The reason why I played the Vagabond is because, though I have 100% shield, it's going to be the slowest version of this fight, because I have no ranged attacks to take advantage of. My recommendation, now the character I'm currently playing on, um, I did it as the Astrologer, Use your magic at the end. I think I missed this one. Yeah, I do. You can tell I'm way too far away. Um, to be fair, you will need to gauge where he's going to land, because that is where I got hit, I think, both times, because he landed on me. I think one of them, he actually slashed me. Um, but yeah, so if you've got any character that has any sort of ranged attack, so the Astrologer, um, or any of the spellcasters, I believe, um, as well as I think the Samurai class has a bow. I've never played them, but I believe they do. Um, you can... Wait until he's about a third of his health, maybe between a third and a half, and you can basically just then use your ranged attacks to kind of finish him off a lot quicker. That's what I do with my Astrologer. I'd recommend doing it afterwards. Uh, the reason being is his second stage is obviously where he gets the fire. Now the fire is, if you've got 100% 
damage reduction shield is still going to damage you a little bit because you're going to take magical damage. Um, however, if you don't have that shield, you're going to take even more damage and it's just going to make the whole thing riskier. So if you can reduce that stage, um, it is better. So yeah, but generally speaking, you want to wait till about between a third and half because what you don't want to do is use all your magic, all your ranged abilities and then have a slither of health left and you're getting a little bit panicky. Um, I mean, even I, at the end of this video, um, I get panicky as well. To be honest, that's really it um, for the fight. It, it's very, very straightforward. Once you realise... Um, you have these three attacks that you can punish him on, and the rest you just flat out avoid. So yeah, roll into it, stab, and immediately roll back. You don't really have to worry. That's it. That That's it. Um, I remember when I figured that out, I was like, right, I'm going to do it first time. I'm even going to re-watch the entire cutscene at the start and not skip it, because I know I'll be okay. Um, that was how confident I was that I knew I was going to do this. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to play the rest, of the rest of the fight at a slightly faster speed. Don't panic, it'll take a while, around 15 to 20 minutes, but it is worth it, you do get some cool items at the end, and yeah, it. I like, I my toxic trait is that I can't enjoy a Souls game if I haven't defeated the tutorial boss, and this is the one tutorial boss that actually is a pain in the ass. So I hope this video alleviates some stress and headaches, and generally you guys find it useful. Um, I'm glad I put it together because this is one of those ones that I'm surprised the guides were way harder than they had to be. Um, it's it's not a hard fight, ostensibly. Anyway, you guys, good luck, and you lot take care.